Hey guys, welcome back to Crafting with Cardboard. I'm Mr. Waxman, and I'm going to be showing you how to make some fun, easy crafts while we're all staying home. This week, I didn't receive any photos uh, of your artwork, but I got something much better. I got a lot of friends uh, who showed up for the Zoom meeting last Wednesday to show off their artwork and to uh, just say hi and have a good time. So remember that if you want to show off any of your artwork, um, you can come this coming Wednesday from 2.30 to 3 and then also from 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon. So that's two separate um, half hour classes. Um, you can come to either one to just say hi and uh, make sure to bring a piece of artwork to show to me and everybody else. Hopefully I'll see you there. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about the word useful. Now I know that most of you have heard this word before or and maybe already know what it means, uh, but for those who don't, when something, when somebody or something is useful, it means that they can, they or it can help other people or um, help to make other people's lives easier or even just better. There are a lot of people in the world right now, like nurses, doctors, firemen, police officers, delivery drivers, grocery store workers, and a whole host of other people that are being extremely useful right now in keeping us all uh, safe, happy, and healthy. Um, but it's not just them, everybody can be useful. Um, whether that's helping your family around the house um, to keep things clean or to, to make food or even just making, uh, making other people around you smile. These are all really you know, useful things to do. Um, art, even though it is often you know, made just to look at, can also be really useful. Um, clothing, for instance, is art in that it, is, it can be very beautiful and it can look really nice, uh, but it is also useful in that it keeps our bodies covered and nice and warm. Uh, so today, we're going to be learning, uh, we're going to be making a project using a technique called weaving, which is basically how fabric is made. Um, and we're going to be using cardboard to make these uh, woven cardboard circles. This is one that I started. So let's get started. For your cardboard weaving circles, you'll need cardboard, scissors, tape, and some kind of string or thread. I have here yarn, some simple twine, and some strips of fabric uh, that were cut from a larger piece of fabric. If you, if you look closely, it looks like these were cut from an old t-shirt or sheet or something. Um, so if you have some old fabric uh, in your house that the adults in your house say you can use, um, that is a great way to make your own string and also to repurpose something that doesn't get used anymore. Weaving is how fabric is made. Nowadays, the fabric for our clothes and blankets and such are mostly woven by machines, but people used to have to hand weave yarn or thread if they needed fabric. Lots of people still practice weaving today because it's important to many cultures and traditions. Now I know not everybody has yarn at home, uh, but you can use any kind of string that you might be able to find around the house and really get creative with how you want to decorate your weaving circle, like with beads or anything else you can find. The first step is to draw and cut out a cardboard circle. I've got a piece of cardboard here, and then I just found um, a circular thing from around the house. You can use the lid of a jar or, um, you know, whatever you can find that you can trace a circle. Uh, you can also just draw your circle freehand, um, but this is a better way to get your, make sure your circle is nice and even. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to trace this and then cut it out. Okay, now my circle is cut out, um, and just keep in mind, uh, I didn't say this before, but you can make your circle any size you want. I've got some much bigger pieces of cardboard here, and I can get a bigger circle to trace. Uh, the only thing you need to think about is how big you want your woven circle to be. I obviously am going for smaller ones, just because they're a little faster, but a bigger one uh, will take more time, uh, and you can do a lot more with it. Anyway, so my next step is to draw something on the circle called spokes. These are like the, um, when you look at a bicycle wheel, it's all those little lines that kind of come out from the center. So I'm gonna draw eight lines um, using a ruler, but you can use, you don't necessarily need to measure, so you don't necessarily need a ruler. You can just use the edge of a piece of cardboard or a book or something like that. Um, just try to make sure that the lines you are drawing all start from the middle. And this doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it, and I think the middle is right about here. So I'm gonna draw a circle right there. Let me see. Yep, probably not perfect, but it's close enough. So now I'm gonna draw eight lines uh, all the way across, and they should be evenly spaced. So what I'm gonna do 
just draw my first line right through the middle. And then my second line, I'm going to make sure uh, that it is something called perpendicular. So when two lines go together like this, that's um, parallel. But when two lines are, one is going uh, th this way and the other one is coming at what's called a 90 degree angle, that means that they're perpendicular. They're going in different, uh, different directions. So the second line is going to be perpendicular to the first. It should look like a corner, like a corner of a square. Okay, and once again, I'm gonna go all the way across, right through that dot I drew in the middle. And I'm actually going to do this two times, two more times. So right now I have uh, four spaces. I wanna have eight by the time I'm done with this. So once again, going right through the middle, trying to get into the middle of this space, so I have a line going right through here. Okay, now I have my spokes drawn. And uh, once again, you're, you, want these, you want these to be as even as possible, kind of like in the example here, but this doesn't have to be perfect. It's not gonna fall apart if it's not precise. Uh, you just wanna try your best, okay? So now I'm going to do something called notching, which means that I'm going to cut along these lines, but only for about a centimeter or so, okay? That's called making a notch. I'm gonna take my scissors and cut along these lines to make a notch. You really do not wanna go very deep at all. Just about a centimeter, or like a half inch. Notice that I'm only cutting it a little bit. Little pro tip here that you might not know. The sharpest part of most scissors is usually the part that's closest to the handle right here. So if you're having trouble cutting with your scissors at home, try holding the cardboard closer to the bottom of the scissors. All right, so like I said before, I just cut some notches. As you can see, I'm only cutting a little bit of the way into the cardboard. I'm not cutting all the way down the line, just a, just a little bit here, okay? And now I, it is time to put my string on. I'm going to start with this regular twine. Um, right now I'm going to be putting these like kind of, these lines through the middle that you are going to use to, wrap, to weave the rest of the yarn through, okay? So I'm gonna start with a simple twine. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a piece, I'm going to push it through this notch and then on the back side, that's the side that doesn't have anything drawn on it, I'm gonna tape it down right here, okay? Tape that down nice and tight so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm gonna take the string and I'm going to follow this line so that I'm going to the opposite notch, okay? I'm gonna put that through. And then I'm going to turn it over and put the string through the notch that's closest. It can be on the right or the left, it doesn't really matter. Um, but don't go all the way over here. Don't go opposite yet. Go to the notch that's um, you know kind of right next to the one that you've already put the string through. So put that through right here into that notch. Okay, make sure it's kind of tight. Flip it back over. I'm gonna do the same thing before. I'm gonna follow this, uh, this line that I already drew. You go to the opposite notch. Flip it over, go to the adjacent notch, flip it over, across. And then repeat this uh, until your thing's full. I did eight lines, or well, one, two, three, four, but it made eight, you know, half lines. You can do as many as you want. You can do uh, 10 or 15 or whatever, um, but you should, you know, always make sure that they're as even as possible in size. And you wanna make sure these are nice and tight because these are gonna hold your string in. Into the notch, and now I'm going to cut it and tape it down just like I did with the first part. All right, so now these are all nice and tight. These strings or threads or twine is going right across the line, and now I can start to weave. So I'm going to start by weaving just some of this regular purple yarn. Uh, I'm going to cut a nice long piece. Uh, if you run out, that's all right. You can always tie it back up. I'm just gonna cut a nice long piece to get started. So, once you have your string, you've got your circle with your, your strings across it. Now, your next step is to take your piece of yarn or string that you're weaving to push it through uh, one or more of these strings right in the middle and to tie a knot. 
Okay. Doesn't really matter how many you put it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put it under all of them actually. If I can squeeze it under. Kind of lift these up. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna tie a knot right here so that this purple string is fixed right in the center, and then we can weave kind of in a spiraling way out from the center. And then cut off the extra. Okay. Now is the weaving part. Um, like I said before, with, uh, as, as you can see on this one, when you weave on this circle, you are weaving in a spiral motion, meaning like it's like going around and around, uh, away from the center, okay? So I'm going to take the end of my string, the end of my yarn, I'm going to put it under one of these pieces of twine. I'm gonna pull it all the way through. Then I'm going to go over this next piece of twine, this next piece of string, over it, and then under this one. So this is how you're going to go all the way around your circle, uh, and you're just gonna repeat this step over and over and over. So each time I go over one, I go under one piece of string, the next string, I'm going over it. The one after that, under, over. Under, over. Under, over. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until uh, either I run out of yarn or until the, the circle is all the way filled up. And you wanna make sure that it's, it's tight, but that you're not um, also like shoving it all into the middle so it bunches up. You want it to be nice and flat so that you can see all the, the circles of string. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead. Now I have run out of string, um, out, out of this piece of string at least, and if I want to keep going with this color, I can just cut more and um, tie the ends together and keep going. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now actually is I'm going to stop with the purple thread uh, so that I can spice it up a little more with some other stuff. So I'm going to just kind of shove this purple thread under. Actually no, I'm going to tie it. I'm going to tie it to this string. Alright, now I'm going to use some of these um, some of these cut fabric strips to spice it up a little bit. So I'm gonna weave a couple around the outside, just like I did with the purple thread, with the purple yarn. I think purple and, and yellow go really well together. They are what's called complementary colors, which means they're opposite each other on the color wheel and that they look good together. Other complementary colors are uh, red and green, blue and orange. All right, now I'm gonna tie this together. Got a nice little circle of yellow around. And you can also weave in other directions as well. So for instance, uh, these are loops. I'm just gonna cut them into strings. So I could even weave through the purple and yellow fabric by going over and under and kind of, you know, putting it through there. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now because I want you guys to have enough time to work on it yourselves, um, but that's basically how you weave. You just go over and under, over and under, over and under. Uh, most looms, that's, this is, this is like a, a, a homemade loom, this cardboard thing with a string. Uh, most looms are squarish and they are like really big and you need all, you know, they have all these kinds of different different kinds of looms that you can look up, uh, but this is a simple one to make at home. And once you're finished, you can have a very pretty uh, little thing to hang up on your wall. Remember that you can get super creative with this. You can add any kind of string you want. 
you can add beads, uh, you know, by like, if, if I had, I don't have one right now, I'll just use my ring as an example. If this was a bead, I could run the string through it and then, you know, keep weaving with that string and then that bead will stay put where it is. Uh, it looks a little silly now because it's a ring, but whatever, it's just an example. And, you know, get creative and hopefully you guys can send me some pictures or bring your cardboard uh, weaving circle to our Wednesday thing so I can see. Okay. Hey Sam. Hey David, what's going on? Not much, what are you working on? So I'm building a set for uh, a photo that I'm gonna take later. Oh cool, and yeah. what is, what do you mean when you say building a set? So basically I am putting all these like different pieces of furniture in here, I put up this fake wallpaper to sort of um, pretend that this room actually exists, and it'll look like an actual room when I take the photo. But, oh, cool. you know, when you see it like this, it's sort of, you know, just put together. Right. So like you said, you're kind of like pretending this room is here, mm -hmm. kind of like setting a background for your photograph, right? Yeah. Uh, which you're going to be in later because it's a self-portrait. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So that's kind of like, kind of like when we like, are drawing a picture and we draw the background before we draw the characters. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're you're setting the scene. Right. Okay, cool. And I can kind of see, you know, when you can see it zoomed out, you can see the whole area. Yeah. But when you isolate this, it's just going to look like a room. Yeah. So this is part of, uh, you know, telling a visual story. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, this scene doesn't actually exist, but it's this, this fake fantasy and story that I'm trying to tell. So I built this whole thing. That's really cool. I like it a lot. All right. Well, we've been talking um, earlier today about being useful and about how art can be useful. Mm -hmm. um, and you're obviously a photographer. Um, and so I wanted to know what you thought about how photography is useful. Yeah. So, I mean, it's useful in a lot of ways. It's useful in a very literal way because you can, you know, document things that you really like. Right. Um, but it's also a useful tool, um, you know, in the same way that art for any kind of artist is a useful tool in you know, ways to uh, work through your feelings, ways mm -hmm. to take out things that you're feeling in a creative way. Um, so art for me, whether it's photography or sculpture, helps me, um, you know, work through my own feelings, work through my own interpretations of things. And Yeah. yeah. I think it's important for other people to see artwork too, because maybe they... Uh, you know, an artist is able to express something that they can on their own. Yeah, and they can see that in the in the photograph or exactly. whatever it is. It's a way to it's a way to express some things that you can't express through words. Maybe I like that a lot. Well, very cool. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right. Thanks for coming for another episode of Crafting with Cardboard. Remember that on Wednesday, I'm going to be hosting two Zoom calls: one from two thirty to three, and one from three to three thirty. So pick whichever time slot works for you and bring a piece of artwork to show off to everybody else. Hope to see you there. Bye. Mm -hmm.